someone doesn't want me to record, let me know. Yes. So welcome to the session. Today now we are dealing on a topic related to early childhood, but also to education and learning, which is core. And uh, I'm going to introduce our guest, guest today. Uh, continue introducing yourself there on the chat. I can see a number of you. So today we are joined by Anthony uh, Kinili. He's a physics teacher with seven years experience. He has educated many learners uh, through the 844 system, through the CBC system, IGSC system, and the A-level curricula. So a breadth of uh, different education systems. He's also a leader and provides leadership as a programs coordinator and Center Kenya. And you can tell us more about that if, if it's okay. And he's also the deputy president of Fun and Education Global Network. Wow. Fun and Education Global Network, which provides interactive learning uh, experiences and mentorship to improve uh, lives globally. So I think this is uh, very critical to have people who are also innovating in learning, bringing fun in learning, and even as we want to have fun in research. And the topic today is introducing STEM, hands-on learning for early childhood learners towards uptake of science careers. So it is to promote at a very young age for young learners to, to take up uh, science careers, science courses, and to develop that interest. So let me welcome you, Anthony, uh, the leader of um, the Journal Club Early Child, uh, Early Childhood Group is here also, Dr. Elizabeth. Maybe you can say hello, and then Anthony, you can come in. Santi. Dr. Elizabeth, hello. you want to say anything? Okay. Yes. Good, good evening, everyone. I'm so glad that this is happening. Sorry, I logged in late. Somebody lost someone, and I had to be now the therapist. So I'm just going home, but I've logged in, and I cannot even wait to listen to what Anthony has for us this evening. Welcome, Anthony. All our ears and attention are given to you this evening. Feel much, much welcomed. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you can all hear me. Loud and clear. Thank you. So just as you've heard, my name is Anthony Kinili, and I'm uh, very pleased to join you this time and uh, to have a presentation in this platform. So as you've heard, I'm the deputy president for the Fun and Education Global Network. And uh, Fun and Educational Global Network, we call it FEGNI. Uh, uh, we'll be able, we'll be knowing much more about it as we continue. So um, for us, we are a team uh, at FEGNE, we are a team of pas passionate change agents. And our goal is to utilize online platforms to empower children, the teens, the youth, uh, in order to be able to, uh, to face the local and global issues with boldness. So uh, I'll be sharing much more on what we do as, we, as I continue. And you'll allow me to share my PowerPoint presentation. Also, before maybe I start, I have to recognize with us, I have uh, Dr. Fan. Uh, Dr. Fan happens to be the president for the Fan and Education Global Network. He's also the founder for the organization and uh, is a very is a is, is a man who is really really passionate about uh, children and uh, please allow me to give him a minute to say hi although i know he'll be uh he'll be speaking at some point uh, dr fan hi i was told to say hi get going anthony thank you thank you thank you dr Tari. all right so all right. 
So as you've heard, our organization to, in the top bottom, uh, in the bottom right there is Fun and Education Global Network. And we are based, our headquarters are based in Nairobi. And as, just as I mentioned, our um, key goal is to uh, be able to enable children using, to help children using different uh, online learning platforms and other uh, physical platforms to empower them, you know, across different ages so that they can be the change makers and uh, to have them bring an impact in the societies and in the areas where they live. So, um, just a minute, yeah. With that, um, what we do is that uh, we provide informal education and when I say informal education is to mean that uh, we do not seek to replace the formal education that happens in our schools, where we know that we have a structured curriculum across uh, uh, our institutions at the various stages, all the way from uh, preschool, the way to university. But we simply seek to, uh, uh, we simply seek to offer informal education, which helps in enhancing the formal education which our young learners go through in their schools. And uh, one thing from the name itself, FUN, we seek to provide uh, this informal education use, uh, through a FUN approach. You see, most of us, uh, we've been used to, you know, uh, especially uh, from the institutions that uh, we uh, came from. Uh, these are, you know, we, we it was more of uh, we were taught using a lecture method whereby a teacher would just come to class, uh, speak, speak, we take notes, and then the teacher goes. But in the approach that we use at Fegni, we want to uh, inculcate or we want to bring a fun approach in what we do. And uh, through that fun approach, we have our learners amazed at the things that you do, and that creates in them the desire even to know more uh, uh, in the areas that they get to study. And for our young learners, we also seek to empower them. As you can see, sorry. We seek to empower them so that uh, even as they grow from a very tender age, they can grow as responsible, uh, uh, as responsible young children who can be able to uh, do things by themselves without necessarily relying on the parents at every stage of their life. And uh, also we seek to engage them. Uh, you'll be able to see as we continue, uh, we normally offer a wide range of interactive uh, activities through our various platforms so that we can be able to engage our learners in hands-on in a hands-on approach. And that helps them to understand what, what we offer to them and then they can also be able to enjoy and be part of uh, the learning. Also to provoke curiosity in our learners, that's also very key because uh, we want them to ask questions on various phenomena that uh, they come across and uh, you know the various processes that they encounter in the process of their learning. And out of that curiosity, then they can also become innovative and that is one thing that we uh, really, really target. So our vision is uh, to be a leading global informal education uh, platform. Uh, um, also, and our mission is to, sorry, um, our values, our core values there are one, passion, also innovation, as well as uh, professionalism and uh, quality. Now, that picture speaks on itself. Uh, these, are, uh, these are learners. Out of what they just seen and what you present to them, you can see they're all amazed. Wow, we really want to know more, you know. Um, and it's just in a very simple informal approach. And uh, through what we do, as I'm going to share, you'll be able to see that, uh, you know, if we can really get our learners 
get to be amused, get to be uh, excited, want to know more, then you find that learning becomes more, more, more effective. So uh, let me proceed. And before I go to the program that we offer, let us ask us, um, what is, why informal education rather? And the first, the power of uh, informal education. Number one is that uh, it really, really supports. It supports and enhances uh, the formal education we find in our schools. And uh, number two, it really gives learners a good foundation. It prepares them, uh, especially in their STEM subjects. We all know that uh, most of the learners in schools normally, you know, STEM subjects, science, mathematics, engineering, especially for the young learners, you know, there's that notion that uh, a lot of people have put in them that, you know, STEM subjects are difficult, you know, they're only meant for the genius. No, through very simple and hands-on approach, we are able to really enable our, our, our learners to get to realize that, yes, I can be able to do this. And uh, then we, out of experience, you've seen quite a lot, a lot of them really do well in these uh, STEM areas. And I'm saying that uh, we really, we are, we are really, really appreciate the CBC and uh, we really support it through engaging uh, our learners and challenging them to think and inspiring them even to understand the world around them, which uh, the world around which they uh, they live. Um, here is a justification for informal uh, education. Number one, uh, as I said, it helps in demystifying STEM, which uh, we know traditionally STEM has been viewed as uh, you know boring and trendy and also difficult. So we, through informal approaches, uh, we are able to demystify STEM. And uh, then we, through informal education, we bring in a participatory approach whereby learners uh, uh, learn as they do. And uh, that becomes very, very effective because uh, if a learner at a very tender age uh, is able to develop, for example, just a next bit about a certain process or a certain idea that they have in their mind, that really encourages them, it inspires them, and uh, brings out the best from them, especially in the STEM uh, subjects. Then again, uh, informal education goes beyond exams. We don't focus on learners just uh, passing their national examinations or even their end of time examinations, but uh, really about uh, what they acquire and what impact can we give them through this informal approach, which is going to last long, you know, and uh, make them uh, better learners as they grow. And the other thing is that um, we try to really uh, enhance innovativeness among our learners. So through these approaches, uh, the approaches that we use, uh, it makes them become competitive and uh, thinkers and uh, be able to explore, want to know more about the environment in which they live. And uh, a, a number of them so far have been able to come up with their projects. Others have come up with their products in the, even at their capacities, which, uh, they, which they use in the process of their studies and the other thing is um, it, we, uh, we seek uh, informal education seeks also to bridge the gap between education and the industry. So you realize that uh, through, the, uh, through the programs that we do, one of them is mentorship and we, we seek to journey with our learners so that uh, at every stage of their growth and development, we are able to really open their thinking help them uh, you know, discover themselves, who they are, and uh, be able to pursue the path, uh, the career path uh, from their hearts and not really what they are uh, forced to do. Uh, so uh, I move on. Okay, here are some facts that I believe uh, uh, most of us know that, uh, you know, from what you can see here, when you, when you just read, reading promotes uh, or rather has 10% of learning efficiency. 
when you, and uh, hearing what somebody tells you uh, that is has a 20% efficiency. But when you see that as a, for a learner, it has 30% efficiency. Here again, when you hear and you see what you're told, that uh, promotes a 50% of learning efficiency. And discussion, when we put our learners to discuss with others and you know in those groups and so forth, that promotes a 60% efficiency. But when there is a direct experience, learners interact with the environment and um, with the things that we tell them about and they're able to develop a product or be able to interact with those uh, items in the process of their learning, then, which is also known as the smart play, that promotes 80% uh, experience. But then when these learners, um, when these learners uh, understand out of the experience uh, with the, uh, the materials that they interact in the, with in the process of their learning, and they are able to even to tell others, oh, you see, this is what I did. They are able to teach others. Uh, then that promotes 95% learning efficiency. And in formal education, we are saying here that uh, we operate in that zone of optimal learning efficiency. Can we really be able to empower our learners in such a way that uh, they can be able to learn, you know, through interacting hands-on experiences with the environment in which they, uh, they, they live or they, they study at. So with that, let me bring to you uh, our core areas of operation. And uh, as you see, fun, 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 number one. We want our learners as we interact with them to really enjoy what they do, to be amused, you know, and uh, it's through that we are able to Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Oh, sorry. I just saw uh, something here muted. Sorry. Okay. Uh, number two, our other core area of operation is uh, educational programs. We do offer a, a, a wide range of educational programs to our learners, all the way starting from, uh, you know, a, a program known as uh, Design for Change, that is robotics. We do science clubs. And what you see here, we seek that uh, in every one of those educational programs that there is a product, there is an exhibit that uh, learners can be able to develop, which will really have a lasting impact in them. And the other core area is mentorship. And uh, so far, we've really been able to mentor quite a number of learners. We've connected a number of learners to mentors all across uh, the globe. and. Uh, we also have uh, career development. And as I say, that we seek to really journey with our learners as they discover who they are and their potentials and help them to really actualize those potentials in the course of their development. Then we also uh, network our learners. And uh, talking about networking here, it's a very, very important thing because we know these learners as they grow Later on in their careers, they are not going to work just from where they grew up from. They are going to travel around the world. And it's a good thing if we can be able to engage, or we can be able to network our learners with uh, professionals and other learners across the world so that they can be able to get that experience. Okay, oh, Kumbe, a learner in the US, you know, this is how they study. A learner in South Africa, in Uganda, Tanzania, this is how they study. And through that, uh, it really um, sharpens their thinking and uh, uh, empowers them as well. And in networking, we also network our, also the teachers. The, uh, the, we also seek to network the tutors and uh, also to empower them. Because you see, if we network the learner and leave the tutor behind, then there's going to be a gap somewhere and uh, it is, important that we network them so that uh, they can be able to get the, re the relevant skills that they can be able to apply in the course of their teaching to understand the challenges that these learners get to go through and to be able to uh, deliver effectively in the course of their learning. 
So uh, having said that now, uh, in this slide, we can be able to see one of our core uh, programs is uh, Design for Change. Now, briefly, uh, Design for Change is abbreviated as the DFC, and uh, this one here is a global movement. And what it does is that it seeks to give children an opportunity to express their own ideas uh, for a better world, and also to be able to put those ideas into, into, into action. And um, the other thing is that it offers, you know, just a simple framework. And uh, through that framework, we actually uh, inculcate the I can attitude in each and every learner who takes part in this program. Now, how is it done? Um, as I said, we normally use the, there are four, uh, uh, there are four stages of this, uh, the DFC program, and uh, they are the feel, imagine, do, and uh, share. And you can call it feeds, the feeds uh, framework. And uh, this, through this framework, we are able to develop actually the 21st century skills in these children, build their social and also emotional competencies, and as well as promote their employability skills. You know, the world today is a fast changing world and the learners need to be up to date with all that is uh, required uh, for them to be uh, successful in their areas of specialization. And uh, I want to say that DFC, uh, I'll not go to the details because of time, but uh, it's just not only simple for learners, but uh, you find that uh, actually it is a very constructive, it's accessible by all learners and uh, a learner from any area of the country uh, can be able to do this. And uh, this is a global uh, initiative and uh, we are really, really glad to be part of it. And uh, so far we have been able to engage quite a number of learners as I'm going to show you some, um, uh, as I'm going to show you as we continue, just a short clip of some of the learners that we've been able to engage and the product that we came up with. The other important one is, as you can see, we have uh, science clubs. And we all know that uh, from the schools that we have been in, the importance of science clubs, uh, you know, they encourage us the, to do sciences, to, you know, to hold the students together, and also to develop a general interest in science. But what you do as FEGNE in these uh, science clubs, of which, you know, we've been able to, uh, really established a number of them so far in different schools is to really seek to join with these students and uh, to be able to help them to develop, uh, you know, products, exhibits, you know, in their areas of interest. And uh, the first thing we do is we help them discover what am I good, what, what am I good in, you know, then we help them as they journey to develop uh, exhibits you know, perform science shows and so forth in their areas. And you see, once they're able to do this and get those exhibits, display them in the course of their learning, then it really, really strengthens them and uh, it encourages them to do better, even in their areas of uh, specialization. And um, we also, as I say, we do uh, mentorship and career development. And this is for learners across a different uh, uh, ages and uh, also another program that we do is the kitchen and home gardening uh this is uh, let me mention something there with that uh in the kitchen and home gardening uh this one is an area that uh, we know today there is really a challenge a big challenge of land you know especially for the learners who happen to be staying within uh, Nairobi or you know, the towns, for example, not necessarily Nairobi, there is a big challenge for land. And uh, if we can be able to help these learners come up with simple ways, you know, uh, in which they can be able to, uh, to, um, to plant just uh, some crops that can be able to help them, then we'll have empowered them. And then they get to have that sense of responsibility in them that yes, like I'm able to, plant, I'm able to really uh, water my crops and get to see them uh, produce, then uh, that really encourages them even to become better. Then we also have coding and robotics. And uh, we also have, as I said, the teacher capacity building uh, uh, programs. 
And um, at this point, allow me just to show you a few of what you are uh, uh, just, just to, to have you get, get to see uh, the pictures of our, and some videos of what we have been doing as FEGNI. And uh, first, to start off our science clubs, you can see here uh, as our, our staff in different institutions. Uh, and you can see we are not in a, not in a formal uh, setting, not in a classroom sometimes, just out there. And we tell our learners, science, you know, we can be able to perform it anywhere. This is, it is so easy. It's what we see around us. And uh, you can see like in the next, uh, um, in the next uh, slide here, yeah, you know, these learners thinking critically, developing exhibits, you know, at a very tender age, you know, and being able to explain what they're doing you know, to their colleague learners. And that, as I said, it really leaves a, an impact in them. And they, you can be sure as they learn through doing using their hands and all other senses, then they will not be able to forget. And you find that as they continue to grow, their interest uh, in those particular areas keeps on growing. Then here's another case uh -huh, of uh, uh, yeah, the, students in a science club in one of the institutions that uh, we've been able to partner with. Then uh, the, the design for change. I have already talked about it. And uh, here, as you can see, we have a team of learners that we engaged back in the year 20, on the left side there, back in the year 2019. And uh, they really, really performed well. Uh -huh, you can see it's a global movement on the right there. Learners in a conference. Then here is another case of uh, another case of learners, but in blue those are our staff, and uh, then in white t-shirts is uh, some of the learners that we've been able to engage in the design for change uh, program. Uh -huh. There we go. Uh -huh. Still more, and uh, here you can see, for example, here these are learners who came up with very very good projects. And uh, in the next slide, I want us to listen very briefly to one of the projects that uh, these learners came up with. Okay, I hope you can hear the sound. Hello, guys. My name is Peter Dasiago, and I'm Jennifer Nyakaru from Kibra, place known as Kianda Bomolulu. We are coming from Chesa Chesa family. 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 We are coming from Chesa Chesa Well, it contains many things inside it so that it can be 
more legit. So and we have used color blue and then another more colors like that color pink, yellow, yellow. blue color. We need to add this perfume. So then smell. <laughs> So be careful, be careful. We come up with the thing with us, I'm going to get a pass of Steva. First, we're not to pull it, take it upside here, push and move up. We are not going to touch the rock. I didn't know come to school. We're not going to get a pass of Steva. We're not going to get a pass of Steva. I think that's great. And as you can see, these are just learners from our slum. And uh, they don't need uh, complicated uh, science equipment to think, develop, uh, come up with, you know, think through the idea in their mind and uh, develop a product. And uh, I can tell you uh, for sure if these are some of the, these among other uh, projects that you've been able to engage our learners in, have really, really left an, uh, a lasting impact in them. And they've always come back. We've been journeying with them. They always uh, want to get to know more and more and to see how to be able to bring solutions to the uh, environment around them and the problems that uh, the people around them face. All right. Uh, the other uh, important program we run is mentorship. And as you can see here, it, this was uh, during a, a particular forum where we have mentors from different places around the world. And uh, we seek to connect them with the uh, learners all the way from, you know, you know those uh, even marginalized areas. And uh, through that, really, it really opens the learners thinking and gets to understand more of what is happening around. And as I said, it's a good thing uh, through membership that they get to be guided as they grow in, at every stage on what is expected of them as they continue to pursue their career. Among other challenges that they may face as they grow. There we go, a number of our learners, we've been partnering them and there's a, there is a program as you can see that we run known as you know, Meet a Mentor. And uh, it's been very, very successful uh, even to date. And uh, at some times we do bring these mentors and our learners, you know, and the fitness staff together to have joint sessions. And even sometimes the parents to these learners so that you can be able to bring our thoughts together and be able to get to understand what are the challenges that our learners face from very, very early stages and uh, get to see what kind of, uh, what kind of approaches can we use as we go forward so that we can be able to help our learners even as they continue to pursue their goals. I mentioned about uh, kitchen gardening among other programs and uh, this one particular program here, we call it the Agritech program. And as you can see, it does not require a lot of space. And uh, this you see here are some of the learners that are the young learners that we've been able to engage them in the Agritech program just a simple guided, uh, a few guided steps. And you can see they are able to feed their families and uh, make their parents proud through producing uh, various uh, uh, crop products. Uh -huh. We have the likes of Sukuma Wiki, the Managos that most of us are very familiar with. And you know, they are quite expensive when you go to the market, but imagine your child there at your home, just uh, feeding you daily with these um, organic products. It's a really, really uh, a good thing. And uh, there we go. We take them to places away from their homes to interact with other uh, professionals, you know, in simple ways. And they're able to see that uh, what they're doing in their homes is the same thing as you can see on the right photo there to what happens in their homes. And it also opens up uh, their thinking. Uh -huh. And uh, on the left, left side there, they're able to ask questions, they're able to uh, get their questions answered, and uh, it is very, very effective. 
among other pro uh, pro uh, programs that we run are uh, science suckers, whereby we load our truck with a range of science uh, exhibits, travel to schools, get to really have a fun uh, moments with the learners in studying science. Now, for example, you can see here, these learners, uh, we have never seen a cloud, but we're able through simple processes, form a cloud, you know, and get they get to interact with it and uh, get to know to know more about hey how are clouds formed can i get really uh form a cloud for our homes and through that they're able to learn uh -huh. there we go that's a, just an event during uh, one of the science circus programs bigger cloud over there yeah uh-huh and as i said we cannot leave we cannot afford to leave the teacher behind it's really good and important to build the teacher's capacity so that even as the learners get to learn and explore the world around them, the teacher also is on, on the same wavelength. And uh, the teacher does, and therefore we, we do invite them to come and see, like you can see here, what we do with their learners and they get to learn more, ask questions we have, in, we interact with them, and uh, that enables them to go and they deliver better even in their schools. We have uh, Zoom meetings with them, uh, uh, teachers from different regions across the world, and uh, we are able to have uh, questions answered, we ask questions and get to learn. Among other pro uh, programs that we run, we have, do have the art and craft. There we go. Uh, so we do run the sports science. Uh -huh. We also have our space science, as you can see. And as you can see here, we really, uh, we really we also participate. We partner with the different organizations and we travel, we, uh, we get to uh, have our learners uh, get to travel around the world in different places, like you can see there. And I have to, I have to mention, we are pleased that our, our president happens also to be the, the, the national coordinator for the design for change. And uh, to right there, that's a, a forum in which you're taking some of our learners, young learners to one of the conferences uh, in Taiwan. And uh, just as I wind up, I also have to say that uh, some of our successful projects that we engage these young learners in, Get, we want to get them, uh, you know, feel that pride. So we seek to have them featured, like you can see here in the newspapers and other uh, media platforms. And that also encourages them to go and perform better. Now, we are not just uh, seeking to have our presence in Kenya alone, but uh, we have other parts we have established um, ourselves in other countries and notably we have Ghana and uh, South Africa those are some of the key our key key partners at the moment who also have our national representatives for the fun and educational global network in their countries and we are really proud of what they are doing in those respective countries uh, the other countries there we are we also also first get uh, developing the interest in what we do and we are glad to have partnered with the different institutions in these uh, respective countries and that we are looking forward to even get to grow more and more. Uh, uh, special thanks to that's our founder and there is going, I'm not going to say more about him, uh, but he's going to have some time to uh, get to tell us more about himself. But I have to say he's a very, very visionary young man who has uh, the interest of the children at heart. And uh, so far, we are gl glad to have uh, journeyed with him this far. And uh, he's a mentor to very, very many young people. Um, that is Dr. Uh, Fan. That goes our fake stuff. Oh, we, as you can see, we don't take it that serious because uh, we are a fan and educational global network. So we believe in fun, fun, fun. What you do, everything you do is fun with a lot of uh, learning. So uh, there is our uh, fake stuff. And uh, we also appreciate our board of directors. We currently have uh, four of them. One that we appreciate their support so far. 
in what we do. They have really adopted it and uh, we are glad to have journeyed quite a long way with them so far. And uh, we also have uh, a number of partners so far um, uh, locally, both locally and also from around the world. And as you can see, quite a number of them displayed over there. And with that, I'd like to say thank you. And uh, there goes our contacts and uh, you can be able to uh, check them. And uh, we'll be glad to partner with you in future as we go along and uh, get, you get to learn more uh, about us and also we get to learn more of what you do. And uh, we hope to all make the world a better place. Thank you. Back to you. Yes, yes. Wow. Thank you very, very much, Anthony, for that presentation. It's really um, amazing to see how we can transform learning in at early ages. And, um, and I think this is what, this is a space with which most researchers are now occupying. How can we make sure that learning is more uh, holistic? It's also not centered on the teacher, but it, it also involves the learner and also the amazement of learning. So thank you so much for sharing how that can actually be implemented. And um, I, we are finishing at 8.30. I want to invite anyone with a question to ask Anthony. I think for me, my question is, here we have a group of researchers who are either working on a paper around early childhood, early learning. Where is the space for researchers? And where can they contribute in terms of the work that you're doing? Where do you see maybe gaps in knowledge, gaps in, in, in how we are doing things? Is it in documentation? Where is the space for, for researchers in programs like yours? Mm -hmm. I can also see another hand. Guru, please ask your question. Hello, hi, how are you? My name is William Nguru. I represent a company called Kurasa. We do uh, assessment tools, digital assessment tools. Primarily, we are working with CBC, and uh, there's a lot of, well, just also to try and also contribute to your question or contribute as an answer is that we see a lot of space in uh, research in terms of assessments, because you realize the uh, CBC is very assessment intensive and there's still a lot of uh, summative culture whereby the primary source of checking the understanding of a, of a learner is mainly summative, so exams and the kind of thing. So we're trying to introduce formative and that's like a very big space that needs, you know, information, best practices, and even impact of what it has to learners. Because I mean, now it's CBC and not being able to tell, you know, what, what uh, number a child is or that kind of reporting. Parents are unable to know, you know, to interpret performance in their classes. So it's it's something, and we're also happy to partner with any researcher or anybody who has more, more to do with the early childhood development, especially within those ages that we had, and also to help them to access the schools where we are working. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you, Guru, for that offer. And I think, yeah, Tim, you can hear that. There is opportunity to partner, to contribute to knowledge in early learning, in even in how we can transform assessments. And also he can link those of you who would like to have more access to schools. Um, so that's a great opportunity. You can leave your contact as well, Guru. Guru, sorry for massacring your name. <laughs> Anyone else with a question before we give um, Anthony to, to respond? Yes, Mary. Okay, thank you. My name is Mary, Dr. Mary Kerich, a guesser from Mo University. Uh, mine is more of a comment that uh, when I listened to the presenter, I saw I wished that uh, 
you could find yourself in most of these schools because I could see that actually if the teachers who are taking part in CBC can take your approach, uh, things would not have, will not be difficult as they seem to be. Because I could see all those competencies in whatever you are doing, the development of competencies like collaboration through your networking approach, communication, digital literacy and all that. So um, I, at first I thought you are an institution and you have your own students, but as you continue presenting, I, I found out that you, you can partner with schools. So have you managed to penetrate in the ministry and maybe showcase what you have for the teachers? Because I think if you do that, you will be able to assist a lot of teachers because they seem to be, because they are taking it uh, uh, as a very serious formal curriculum. They don't seem to be actually enjoying because there are, there are a lot of complaints, but if this approach of fun is, is used, I think the learners would, um, would gain a lot and also the teachers would not feel like they are straining. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Over to you, Anthony. Uh, reflections on those questions. Is Anthony with us? Oh, I can't see him on the... Yeah, it looks like he has disappeared. Maybe he was kicked off by the internet. Yeah, uh... maybe the network. Okay, is there anyone from uh, Fegni? Feg, I think it's Fegni. Mm, not quite. Okay, maybe I'll just uh, pose them to him the questions, then he yes. can um, he can answer later. But I think uh, as we wind up, um, I think the inspiration we can draw from today's session, one is to see that Africans have solutions for their own problems. This is an African-led initiative that is transforming learning for African children. I feel inspired that wherever you are, you can always uh, make a difference and you can always start something, nurture it, and you will always find people who will grow with you. I think the second learning from today is um, that the, the spirit and momentum of transforming learning is, is here with us. We have many people who are looking at the way we teach, the way we learn in, in our context and saying we can do better. So I think we are part of that momentum and this offers us opportunities, even as we do research, to be able to research in a way that is also in line with this transformation, the books we read, the, the kind of questions we are asking are also in line with where the transformative learning and, and this holistic approach to learning is, is going. So I think there are many things we can draw from here for those who are working on their papers, for those who are publishing, I also publish on early childhood. And this is really, this is the message we keep talking about, holistic learning contextual learning, collaborative learning. And, and this is, is very important that it's coming to fruition. So Anthony, you're here. One of the questions that was asked by Mary, have you penetrated our schools? Um, what is the reaction there? Are you talking to our teachers? And the other one that had asked you the role of researchers in what you're doing. Just in two minutes, then we wind up. Uh, sorry, uh, just come again kindly. My internet uh, got disrupted. So one of the questions is, what is the role of researchers like ourselves, like Ada Africa? We are a collective of African scholars, African researchers. And as I said, the group here is mainly of those who are in early childhood. What role can we play in terms of contributing to knowledge, to the work that you're doing? What areas do you see as contributing? the work you're doing in terms of knowledge, in terms of practice, 
And then the other question from Mary was, um, have you been able to penetrate our schools? What is the reaction you're getting there? And are teachers also part of the people you're now, um, as the CBC is on, are teachers part of the group that you're grooming? Uh, yeah, just to know, are you within the, the education sector? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for those questions. And uh, please allow me uh, go to uh, take uh, one of the questions. And uh, also, I'm having my colleagues here from FEGNI. We have uh, Joshua Mohuli and also Daniel Dungo to, uh, I'm going to let them uh, also answer the other questions. So the, your second question on um, whether teachers are a part of the team that uh, we are grooming, yes. As I said, we have not left the teacher behind. And uh, while, while FEGNE, though being a growing uh, organization, we are seeking to uh, empower these teachers with the 21st century skills, actually, which are, are relevant to uh, for these learners. And as I said, we have uh, various programs uh, that we do have whereby we are able to bring these teachers together and uh, we have joint sessions and uh, be able to be able to come and we get to interact we get, they get to know what to do and uh, we get to share with them and uh, through that we are able to bring them up to date with the uh, the needs for these learners and the, the, you know, the teaching approaches that they can be able to use that are effective for these learners in and outside their classroom. And uh, that is something that we've been uh, doing. So we have not left the teacher behind. Thank you. So I think uh, maybe if I'm answering your question, I'm going to hand over to uh, either Dan or Joshua to also address the other question that was asked. Dan? So, um, evening everyone. Allow me to answer that question about uh, how researchers can be of help. Uh, one thing uh, you know, and we understand is that researchers are the best people to advise on the way to take up things because they go through as you know about the research process and all that so when it comes to like for us at fegne part of the team that we have are people who are already in education and people who help us uh, in developing content curriculum and all that so as a researcher one of the things that uh, you can really bring on board is advising us on curriculum that is after you assess the status of uh, education maybe in the country you can easily be able to tell what's the best for the child in this uh, time that we are living in two we're also looking about educating people who have disabilities for a normal teacher for us educators at, at some point it might be hard but for a person who has already done research they'll really understand and grasp what this child face what they need and all that they may be the best people to advise on that and the other thing is that when it comes to even the team itself, the educators themselves and the teachers themselves, being able to connect with the students, the, the researchers can really play a big role whereby they come in and uh, we're talking about helping, uh, doing workshops for these teachers, doing workshops for these educators so that they'll get to know at what level does this child, uh, if you're talking about a certain topic, assuming you're talking about climate change, the way we talk it uh, about climate change to a child who is two years, three years, five years, is not the same way we talk to a child who is maybe 14 and all that, and people are in high school. So researchers can really tell us, according to this age, this is the best uh, language to use. According to this age, age, these are the best and all that. So just, just, just a few ways in which researchers can help. Have, have yes, that. yes, thank you, Daniel. I think you've provided us with good insights on where we can contribute, where we can research better and write about. Because even for us, as we know, as we keep saying, even in the early childhood space, a lot of the knowledge contributed is really 
a lot of publications are not driven by African researchers, they're driven by research from the West. And we have to be a space of speaking about our own children. So there is the opportunity for us to contribute in a very strong way in, in our own knowledges and put that out to the world as we collaborate with other people. Finally, Isabella, you want to say something? Thank you. I'm Isabella from Masinde Mudure University. Um, I'm a student there doing master's in early childhood education. So my question is, uh, from, from your presentation, I'm seeing you are talking about years from six years and above. And I believe that when you say early, child, early years education, I believe it's supposed to start from the age, the ECD age, whereby the ECD age, we start from five to six years. So I was, I'm, I'm like, is this a, a fun and education global network? Is it just from six years? Why are you leaving these five years old and the CBC say CBC is from five years? And then another question is, uh, I've just seen you, the, <clears throat> the children that you have been on the, on the screen are children from urban areas, meaning the schools from urban areas and one from the slum. Have you included children from rural areas? That is my question. Thank you. Thank you, Isabella. Anthony, over to you or a member of your team. Uh, I think uh, Isabella is asking a question about the, the geography, the reach in terms of equality and equity in, uh, in your programming and who is your target uh, market uh, or audience. And also a very important question on categorization of the early years. I think a lot of literature shows that zero to three is actually the most invisible age. In, yeah. in early childhood and and we need to have these children they are children they are growing they are visible where is the space for the early years in your program or what are your visions around that so i'll help answer that one is for that first question about our target group as we were starting uh, we were looking mostly at people the children who are around six to fourteen that's when we started. But straight on uh, through, that was during COVID time, students were at home and the people we could easily manage to get to were the ones between six to 14, because uh, they had already gotten some background in maybe skills in using computer, mostly we were using Zoom and all that. But the moment school resumed, we started working also with PP1s and all that. So, uh, between five to six, we have PP1s who are there. Between five to six and all that. So for them, how we work with them is, we do just, uh, just to give them that aspect of, just to provoke their curiosity uh, with those children considering the, uh, the, the state of education in our country. Uh, this with CBC, that's when we've already started that you've, you've seen that uh, we have children now who are four, three and above uh, some at some point maybe being in school. But what we did uh, now we've introduced design for change for those students and we asked them through design thinking what affects them, how can we uh, give them problem solving skills, how can they just grab to ask why, why, why and then through that process of asking why they can really understand how things are happening and all that. But for the sense at the moment, <laughs> we are working on developing content for them. Uh, and about uh, our geographic location, mostly sense is not as, even though we are using cheaply available materials, when it comes to sense, considering you're using chemicals and all that, at some point it becomes expensive. That's why we are looking, we are working mostly with urban schools. For the rural, for the rural schools, uh, recently, we were in Busia and we visited a few. So, yeah, we are picking up slowly by slowly through partnerships and collaboration with other organizations. But uh, we've also.
tried working with slums, especially here in Kibera, we've tried. Uh, there's a group that the the junior and all that. But uh, can we have already established uh, kits that we can easily send to rural areas with instructions that parents can easily help the student understand. Also considering about technology. In rural areas, technology is not easily accessible. So it might become expensive for us to travel to those areas to interact with these students. So the best way is develop content, the package it in a way that parents can easily interpret and then send those kids so that those kids can be able to also be part of it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daniel. Certainly it is step by step. And I think many opportunities for all for people to actually come in and also partner with you and, and support the initiative. But I think with, with how you are and how you started, it's really uh, commendable. And if any of you in the audience also wants to maybe support the, the children in the rural areas and partner with them, why not? So let me call this to a close and thank everyone for making time to come today. Uh, we usually have the, if it's okay with everyone, we usually have these uh, presentations on on the on our YouTube channel because, as I told you, we have about 800, 900 members who could not be here. So sometimes people listen off off the live session. So that's the way in which we create visibility for scholars who present, but also making sure that other people who did not attend. Um, were able to hear that presentation. And that's how we also uh, make sure that African voices, African scholars' voices are being heard and they're being seen. So thank you for those who are in the early childhood group. Congratulations for hosting your first event this year. We look forward to more. We look forward to many of you going for conferences and partnering with uh, FECNE in whatever way possible. And um, on my behalf, my name is Aurelia Monene and the Journal Club admin team. I wish you a good night and looking forward to more discussions. Um, Thank you. On this. Yes. So you can live at your own will. It's bye-bye from us at Ada Africa and looking forward to the next presentation. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. Good night. Bye.